It wouldn't be an Amber Live Halloween show without the visit from Thea Lewis. Thea is one of our favorite ghost storytellers and authors. Thea, come on in. Hey there. Happy Halloween. Oh, yes. Welcome back. Now, since we've last talked to you, you have a new book out. Tell us about it. I do. It's called True Crime Stories of Burlington, Vermont, and it was a lot of fun to research and write. It's on uh, bookshelves now in all your favorite independents and also at Barnes & Noble and on Amazon.com. That many crimes here in Burlington? So many crimes. And the shocking thing uh, to most people, when I sit in groups of readers who come uh, to hear me tell stories about the book and then uh, have me sign the book, um, the interesting thing to them is that I actually knew a couple of the murderers personally. That is, that is very, very scary. And what number of book is this of yours? This is my seventh book in all and my sixth book with Arcadia uh, and the History Press. And most of them are ghost stories, and this one's crime-related. Wow. What, what got you started in writing books and, or the, the fascination with the ghosts? Well, the fascination with ghosts kind of goes back to my quirky family. And, uh, you know, I went to Salem, Massachusetts back in 2001, and it is the land of all things spooky. And when I came back from that vacation, it got me wondering, why didn't Burlington have a haunted tour? And so I did research for a year and started Queen City Ghost Walk. Um, we like to joke that it doesn't keep me off the streets, but it keeps me out of mischief. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on several of your tours and they are great. All right. So what's the story tonight? Tonight, I want to tell you a story about a waterfront ghost, a waterfront ghost named Isaac Nye. But he had a very interesting nickname. His nickname was the Hermit of Champlain. And here's why. Isaac Nye was a merchant in the city of Burlington. He started off his career in business in the center of town, a little bit off the beaten path of the busy Water Street or uh, Battery Street as we know it today. But then he got this business, kind of a mercantile, you might call it a general store, there on the waterfront in the place that we now know as the Shanty on the Shore. And back in those days, I mean, you walk behind the shanty on the shore today, and there are railroad tracks and there's the dock. In those days, the dock was right there where Isaac Nye lived and the water came up very close. So Isaac Nye was called the Hermit of Champlain um, because of something terrible that happened to him a little later in his life. But earlier on, people marveled at him because he was so strange. He really didn't have the habits of other men of his generation. I mean, he um, didn't smoke cigars or pipes. He didn't um, chase the loose women that were proliferate down there on the waterfront. And he didn't drink whiskey. But what Isaac Nye really loved to do, in fact, his only hobby was follow funerals. And it didn't matter at all whether he knew the deceased. As a matter of fact, many times he didn't. He would call for this young boy, James, who was an orphan he'd taken in. And James would hitch the horse to Isaac Nye's buggy. And Isaac Nye would go to the funeral and uh, watch as everyone paid their last respects there at the cemetery. And then for some reason, he would stay until the last shovel full of dirt was thrown on the grave and he'd turn around and go back home. Now, I did this for quite some time and working in his shop out in front of the building. And Isaac Nye um, was notified by a man named Timothy Follett, who is another ghost on my tour. Uh, Timothy Follett was the president of the Rutland and R Burlington Railroad Company, and he wanted Isaac Nye's water rights to fill the land for the railroad. And Isaac Nye said no. Timothy Follett, very well connected, friends with, uh, you know, rubbing elbows with guys on the Supreme Court, he took Isaac Nye's land by eminent domain. And after that, Isaac Nye said that business was distasteful to him. He wrote this in a letter to his brother who lived at the time in Essex, New York. And you know what Isaac Nye did? He got up the next day after he mailed that letter and did not open his store. So people coming in from ships in Burlington's Harbor and people from the middle of town would jiggle the handle of the door of the store furiously, but could not get in. Well, this went on for about 15 years until Isaac Nye passed away. And when he did, it was noted in his last will and testament that he hoped to be able to be laid to be viewed on the counter where he'd done business before he'd locked up his store so people might come to pay their last respects. 
and they granted his wish. However, they didn't clean anything up. So 15 years of bats and rats dead and alive, spiders and cobwebs were all over this store as the fine people of the city of Burlington filed through to pay their last respects. Now, because of Isaac Nye and all his quirky behavior and his tendency to want to be left alone, this hermit of Champlain, we have lots of crazy things that happen in the shanty on the shore building. Uh, it's been noted in papers like Seven Days that up in the lounge, if you talk about Isaac Nye too much or if he just feels generally like making himself known, all of the bottles behind the bar will shake furiously and sometimes a little wind might whip through the lounge upstairs. A young woman came on one of my Darkness Falls tours, and she told me she used to work at the shanty on the shore, and one of the chores that she had to do at the end of her shift was to go into the dining room and put up all the chairs on top of all the tables so that the person who came in the next morning very early to clean could clean the floors. She said one night she went around the dining room, placing all the chairs upside down on top of the tables, as one would, and then she was leaving the room and went to turn off the light and she happened to, for some reason, just look back and make one final glance, and she saw that one chair from every single table was sitting on the floor. Well, this young woman was very startled, to say the least. But my favorite story about someone's encounter with Isaac Nye was the story of a young couple who was at another restaurant right across the way, the old Ice House restaurant. And it was quite late at night. They'd been attending a private birthday party. And when they came out, the shanty on the shore was closed. Well, the woman, as she was getting into the car, looked across the street and saw an elderly man, it seemed, very fragile, wearing old-fashioned clothes, gazing out at the lake, just standing near the railroad tracks, just observing. He was kind of quavering back and forth, and she said to her husband, honey, we've got to go help that man. He's all alone here. We can't leave him on the waterfront, as they were the last ones there in the parking lot, apparently, except for the staff inside. Well, her husband said what my husband might have said. Don't go near him. He's none of our business. <laughs> but what happened was she talked him into it and they approached. The young man walked up behind the gentleman as the gentleman was swaying there and looking a little uncertain. He put his hand out and he said, excuse me, sir, my wife and I were just wondering. And then the man looked at him and began to slowly disappear. He was there looking like a human looking like you, looking like me. And then he faded until he was simply invisible. Those two people got into their car so fast it would make your head spin. <laughs> I love the shanty on the shore. It is one of my favorite haunts in the city of Burlington. <laughs> now, how did you find out about him following the funerals? Well, he was actually the subject of an article in the New York Times when he passed away. And it was noted in a couple of other um, articles in old newspapers that Isaac Nye had one habit that seemed to be, uh, you know, his, um, the thing that he did that gave him joy, which was to, or at least gave him solace, or maybe he was looking ahead at the end of his life. I'm not quite sure, but he loved to follow funerals. There's another interesting, uh, interesting story about Isaac Nye. When they tried to take his water rights, um, he, they offered him $1,500, which was a princely sum back in the mid 1800s. And Isaac Nye had what was called at the time, a raft of spars. And I had to look that up. A raft of spars would be a bunch of masts kind of hitched together. And he said he didn't want to give away his water rights. He preferred to have his uh, raft of spars right out there behind his establishment because he took, took such joy at seeing the young neighborhood children, mostly Irish, use it as a place where they would jump off into the lake. Fascinating story. You're a great historian. You're a better storyteller and a, a terrific author as well. Thea, it wouldn't be Halloween without you. Thank well, you thank so you. much. <laughs> Take care.